Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So in this one, we'll be doing a complete walkthrough, as always, of the Edexcel IGCC paper. And this time, we'll be looking at the January 2019 Maths A Paper 2H. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and skip straight to the question. But just as always, you're given a bunch of formulas, you know, uh, arithmetic series, quadratic formula, which, by the way, is somebody you should, you should try your best to know by heart. You know, trigonometry, triangle formulas, 3D shapes, and so forth. Thankfully, all the relevant ones are here. Everything else you can kind of figure out from this volume of prism or the quadratic itself. Anyway, let's go straight in, guys. So, okay, question one. So a plane has a length of 73 meters. Now, the scale of the model is made of the plane, and the scale of this model is 1 unit to 200 units. So what this means, that in reality, the plane itself is 73 meters. But if you had to jot this down on paper, you need to divide it by 200 to find its actual scale. So we can say, all right, so on paper, it's going to be 73 over 200, okay? And then doing that, 73 over 200, and always do this in calculator, guys, you get 0 0.365 meters, okay? So that, that's the length on the paper right now. Now, work out the, the length of the scale of the model. We did that. Give your answer in centimeters, so we ain't done that. So to go from meters to centimeters, you must always multiply by... 100 so just times this answer by 100 and doing that you should get 36.5 centimeters and that's it guys that's literally one done all right number two so here are the first five terms of an arithmetic sequence okay so you've got 7 11 50 and so on so we can see they're going up in fours so plus four Write down an expression in terms of n of the nth term of the sequence. Now, the nth term formula is very straightforward. I mean, you could memorize it by one or two methods. I'm going to use uh, the formula method. So the formula is always this. It's always the first term, a, plus n minus 1 times d. Okay, d being the difference, okay? So looking at each ring, so we can see that the first term, a, is uh, 7. So it be 7 here. And we can see it's going up in plus 4. So it'd be plus, so it'd be all of this lot, n minus 1 times 4. So times in this by 4, you're going to get 4n minus 4. And just tidying it up now, collecting like terms. So you're going to have 7 minus 4 is 3. So it'd be 3 plus 4n. That's it, guys. All you have to do. Okay, number 3. So there are 90 counters in a bag, all right? Each counter in the bag is either red or blue. We'll keep that in mind. So that the number of red counters to the number of blue counters to 13. Let's go ahead and work out how many counters we have straight away. So if you want to change this one into some sort of uh, fraction, we can see that our total number of uh, counters, let's say 15 pass if you add them up, we can say that 2 out of 15 is red, and therefore 13 out of 15 must be blue. Now if you want to straight away and work out how many counters there is, you literally just put in the calculator, 2 over 15 times 90 and doing that 2 over 15 multiplied by 90 will give us 12 so there are 12 red counters for blue same thing 13 over 15 times 90 and that's going to give us 78 and of course just double checking adding these two you get 90 so it checks out now let's keep going so lee is going to put some more red counters in the bag so that the probability of taking at random a red counter from the bag is a third. Okay, so let's think about a second, yeah? So you have 19 total. He's going to add some extra red counters, yeah? And you've got 12 reds already. So it's going to be 12 plus some extra counters, let's say X. That means you now have 90 plus X in the bag, right? So this is going to be red counters. And this is going to be in blue counters, well, it's still 78. And here's the total. Okay. Now, it says here that the probability of taking at random a red counter from the bag is a third. So this means that the probability of taking a red, and you know how many reds there are, you have 12 plus x over 90 plus x, and it's going to equal a third. Okay? Work out the number of red counters that Lee is going to put in the bag. Now, literally, you just have to solve this algebra equation. The easiest way to solve this nicely is to literally multiply 90 plus x across, and 3 across. So times in 3 across and 90 plus x across, you're going to have 3 on the left side, multiply it against 12 plus x, 
you have 90 plus x on the right side multiplied by 1, which is, well, 90 plus x. So let's go ahead and then expanding both sides. 3 times the bracket, you get 36 plus 3x. The right side, 90 plus x. Now the tip is, is to always move all the x's on the left and all the non-x terms on the right. So moving plus x across, you're going to minus x. So 3x minus x is 2x. Moving plus 36 across, it becomes minus 36. So subtract 90 from 36, you're going to get 54. And finally, to get x, you got half it. So half of 54 is 27. So this means they added an extra 27 reds. So now it says, work out the number of red counters that Lee is going to put in the bag. He's going to put an extra 27 reds. All right, number four. So according to this system, so this here tells you all the numbers are, are actually allowed in the in the square inside the Venn. And it tells us that all these 12 digits from 1 to 12 are the only possible numbers in this universe of sets. Now set A tells you out of these set of numbers, we only choose the odd values. So numbers like 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 and 11 are allowed. So it's probably best we write it down. Okay, so always write down the actual number versions, yeah? Okay, perfect. You can use the curly brackets. Now it tells us here the next part, A and B, this means that when the, when the set of A intersects with the set of B, only 1 and 3 are in common. So from this information, we can say that set B must have at least 1 and 3, because that's what they have in common. Now the next part, A, U, A, U, B, this means that A unites with B. And, when you, and this means that when you when you um, collect A and B, these are all the numbers that they have. So what you can do is look at all the other numbers that don't exist in A, but are united with A and B. So we can see that A has one has odd numbers, but B here has, let's see, like 2, 4, 6, and 12. So that's all the possible options we have in B. Okay. Now, what you want to do here is now you want to sketch a Venn diagram, okay? So, because we're dealing with A and B, we just draw two circles. So, we've got A, and you can call this one B. So, A and B. So, it doesn't have to look pretty. You just have to make sure it's within the box. Now, inside of A, let's put what they both have. Let's put the center bit. The center bit is what they both have in common. We know they both have a 1 and 3. So, you put 1 and 3. Now, we look at just A, what A has. A is all odd numbers, so we've already included 1 and 3. We also put 5, 7, 9, and 11. So 5, 7, 9, 11. As for B, we've covered 1 and 3, but it also has some even numbers. So it has 2, 4, 6, and 12. Now, we're not done yet. Now we're going to put the numbers that we did not include A, B inside, just outside the circles within the, the box. Because remember, this universal set is kind of epsilon looking thing has 12 digits. So what do we not include? So we, we cover the 1, we cover the 2, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, there's no 8, so 8 goes outside, 9, there's no 10, 11, 12, and that's it, it checks out. So that's really all you do for Venn, you just want to see what numbers they have and literally just draw a nice sketch. Alright, number 5. So Calvin has 12 identical rectangle tiles. He arranges the tiles to fit exactly around the edge of a shaded rectangle. So he's talking about, so these 12 identical tiles are literally all of these around, yeah? Now, as shown in the diagram below. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yep, just, just double checking. So, yeah, so work out the shaded area. Okay, so they all have, so we go look at this way, yeah? So they all have the same length. So let's suppose this length, we don't know what it is. Let's just call it X, yeah? So we've got x, 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 and so on, yeah? It's always good to just label them all, just to make it easy. Now this extra little shortened bit, let's call it y, yeah? Let's give it another letter. Y, 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 and so forth, yeah? So now we can say, and because we've got actual measurements, we can say, all right, we can say that the, the width of this would be 123 equivalent to x plus x plus x plus x plus y. So you can see that a total of four x's plus y must be 123. Looking at the, um, the vertical, we've got x plus x plus y gives us 67. So that's two x's plus y equals 67. Now we have literally a pair of simultaneous equations. 
If we can work out what this is, then we can literally figure out what the shade area is. We'll get to that in a second, actually. So the easy way to do this, um, you can look at both equations. Thankfully, we have y's which look the same. We could just subtract this entire equation. So if you do that, you're going to have 4x to equate 2x, which is 2x. y to equate y, which is nothing. And you got 123 minus 67. So in your calculator, you can do that, and you get 56. And then to get x, you got half this. So half of 56 will be 20a. So now we've got something. And again, if you want to find y, just pick an equation like this one, for instance, and make y the subject. So to do that, subtract 2x across. You can have y equals 67 minus 2x. So plug in the value of 28 for x. So you're going to have 67 minus 2 times x, which is 28. And I'll give you a y. Put this in the calculator. So 67 minus 2 times 28, you get 11. So now we're almost done, yeah? So the point of this is that when you find these lengths, you can kind of chip it off here to work out the actual length here. Okay, we can see that, um, let's just have a look for a second. So we can see that if you want to find the, the, the height of this one, it's going to be all of this x plus this x minus some y. Notice that this little bit is length of y. So we can say, all right, this x is going to be, what is, what's x again? 28. This length is going to be 28 minus the y bit, which is 11. And 28 minus 11 oh, is 17. So that means the total length here. Uh, let's put 17. So the total length would be 28 plus 17, and that's 45. So probably best we resketch this actually. Okay, guys, so let's see. So it'll be 45 here. This is the shaded area. Now for the width, what do we have? So we've got x plus x plus x plus x minus y, yeah? So x, x, x. So we've got 3, we've got 4x minus y. Okay, so what's 4x minus y? We've got, uh, let's see, 4 times 28 minus 11. That's going to give us 101. Okay, and just checking your measurements, okay? We compare it to the actual lengths. It's smaller than 67. So 45 is smaller. 101 is also smaller than 123. So it could be legit. It feels legit. Now, to find the area, it's always just base times height. So 101 times 45. And that should give us 4545. So 4545. And that's it, guys. All right, here we go. Number six. So find the highest common factor of 96 and 120. Okay, highest common factor. To do this nicely, let's just break 96 and 120 into prime factors, yeah? So the, the method usually is to use a Venn diagram when you do this. So breaking this down, you know, from twos and whatever. So 96 can be broken down to 2 times uh, 40, God, I do not know this one, 48, uh, is that right? Yep, breaking down 48, that's just 2 times 24, breaking this one is 2 times 12, breaking down 12 is um, 2 times 6, breaking down 6 is 2 times 3, and when you do that, make sure you circle all your prime factors, so like 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, and 3, okay. Now, as for what, so then we can say, therefore, 96 is going to be, how many twos do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it'll be 2 to the power of 5 times 3. And then we do the same for 120. Okay, so let me just change the color a bit. So 120, and you can do it anyway. I'm going to break this down into 12 times 10. So you've got 12 and 10. 12 can be broken down into 2 and 6. And 6 is down into 2 and 3. 10 is the same or different. It'll be 2 and 5. And then circling, you know, the last legs, is going to be 2, 2, 3, 2, 5. So we can see that 120 is the same as, how many 2's we have? 1, 2, 3. So 2 to the power of 3 times a single 3 times a single 5. And now, when you've got all of these down, you can just draw two Venn diagrams, so two circles. Label one of the, the circles 96 and the other one 120. And now... The, the highest common factor would be what they all have in common. So we can look at all these numbers. We can see that 96 has 2 to the power of 5 and 3, and 120 has 2 power 3 and so on. They both have 2s up to 3 powers. But 96 has an extra 2 powers of 2. Okay, as for 
what else they have? They both have a 3, and a 120 also has a 5. So then the answer would be the, the middle sect. The middle part is the highest common factor. So the highest common factor is 2 to the power of 3 times 3. And that's it, guys. That's literally how you do it. Okay, part B. Find the lowest common multiple of A, B, and C. Now, lowest common multiple is so easy when it comes to powers. You just look at all the numbers and just pick the highest powers of each one. So we say that, okay, the lowest common multiple, so starting with 2, the highest power in all of them is 4, so 2 to the power 4. For the 3s, there's only one 3, so include that. For 5s, you've got 5 and 5 squared. The highest power is 2, so 5 to the power of 2. For 7s, is 7 to the power of 2. And lastly, 11 is 11. And that's it. 